What is up gang? This is the x -Men Featurette channel and I'm Chris and I have another TGIX review video. Today I'm going to be reviewing Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker which <laughs> was sent to me for review by Code Red. This is a, a 1982 release and what a whacked out film it is. This was my first time watching it and um I'm, I'm glad I did because it's right up my alley if you know what my style is. So in this movie, I'll give a brief uh, no spoiler, no, like no big spoiler um, review of the movie. And then I'll talk about what we have in the Code Red release. So basically this movie stars the half naked dude we see here is um, Jimmy McNichol. Yeah. So he plays um, an orphan named Billy and he has a girlfriend and he has a crazy aunt who is played by Susan Tyrell. We also have Bo Svensson and we have a young Billy Paxton uh, making an appearance in this. He has such a small role, but oh my gosh, he is phenomenal. He was hilarious. I was pretty much cracking up the whole time he was on the screen. So really sad he wasn't in this more, but um, nonetheless, it was very fun. So this starts with Billy. He's like three and he's being dropped off to be babysat. His parents are going on some trip and we witness a horrific car accident like they're careening down this uh like windy mountain road and the br the brakes don't stop so you know very tragic and then um and then it basically fast forwards to uh billy when he's about to turn 18 and we get a glimpse of his life with his crazy aunt it starts i think with him being woken up by her and she's like rubbing on his like nude back, like making cat noises. And I kind of want to attempt these noises, but I also don't want to embarrass myself, but whatever. She goes like, and like makes this like kitten, like a purring kitten sound. And she also does it throughout the movie at different intervals, which are equally as disturbing. So there was that. So yeah, we, she just kind of like, wakes him up in this fashion and it's like what is going on and I'm pretty sure my face was plastered throughout most of this movie and kind of like a what's happening so basically auntie is uh, a little bit incestual I would say so this is really bizarre like the aunt says to Billy like hey you know call the TV repair or whatever, call the repair guy because something's not working. And he's just like, oh, can't you do it yourself? Like, what's up with you? She's like, no, no, you have to do it. We already see that she's like kind of thirsty for her, her nephew. And then it's like, <laughs> this guy comes over and she immediately like takes her top open and like, she's like, oh, I just wanna, I, I need a man, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, uh, no lady, get away from me. And basically things turn ugly and it ends with her like stabbing him. So this is not like a spoiler. This is a major pivotal part of the plot, which happens pretty early on. So basically Billy walks in on that scene and takes the knife and is like, whoa, 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 what are you doing, lady? And uh, this older couple that's like friends with her happens in because it's like Billy's birthday or something. And... Uh, this older couple, they totally remind me of Fred and Ethel from I Love Lucy, but they stick around because they're like nebby and we're just like, this whole scene is just like, what is, what is going on? You know, you totally relate to Billy in this movie. He's a very relatable character and it's just like, like I said, he's very, um, he's very naive and just like, you get the, the sense that his aunt is just like spiraling out of control because he's nearing uh, leaving her. I'm not going to talk about too much of the plot because I don't want to give it away because there were a lot of moments. I thought that this was kind of, there was a predictability to it, but also there was a lot of things that I wasn't per se expecting. So I don't want to spoil that. Um, there is this Fred and Ethel duo, which are very, kind of comedic but also they're there to like give us more information and then there is the girlfriend um who she seems very very clingy but I mean uh, whatever I guess teenage girls can be and then there is the um after the murder takes place there's this detective and he is a stark raving homophobe like this guy 
I'm not going to divulge who because it'll give away too much of the plot, but there's some characters in this that are gay. And basically, he spends his entire time trying to vilify and accuse of murder the characters that he thinks are gay. There's some words that are used that nowadays would be considered slurs. You know, it's just like you, you hear these things used in a 1982 movie and you're like, whoa, like he just went there. Billy is like a very innocent character. He doesn't have any idea. Like his aunt at some point starts like drugging him. Like you see her putting like drops of like something in his milk and um, basically to sabotage his um, to sabotage his scholarship and at other points to just keep him in the house because she doesn't want him meddling so you know that she's like insane but then it like spirals even further down and she starts talking to a shrine and then she starts talking to corpses and then you get the idea that she's killed before and this one you know she kind of <laughs> why did she kill this dude that like this repairman that she requested to be in her house to keep Billy at home. So basically she's roundabout framing her nephew for murder because she doesn't want him leaving. So this woman is very unhinged and we always get that sense, but oh my gosh, as the movie progresses, she, the way she acts is just off the deep end. Like it's totally insane. And there was parts that I felt like uncomfortable watching it. Like, this is creepy. Incest mixed with like homophobia and uh, yeah, I mean that in and of itself is just like, ugh, it kind of gives you like a weird feeling watching it. I say that and it's like, this is still an enjoyable movie for me. Like I wasn't bored watching it. I wanted to see how it progressed. The first thing that stuck out to me whenever I like looked at this movie was the title, Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. And I was like, what what is where are they getting that I, where does this title even come from so we know like butcher baker candlestick maker from that what is it like the rub-a-dub-dub -dub, like uh three men in a tub like nursery rhyme or something i feel like the aunt is trying to keep billy a kid like she wants him to stay a kid and stay like dependent on her even though it kind of seems like she wants to do him at the same time but anyway um so I think that that's like part of it. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of like um, in, infantilizing him. But then like the alternative title, and I flipped around the artwork, is Night Warning. So really like both of these titles, I'm kind of like, I don't really know what they have to do with the movie. I don't know what Night, night Warning is so generic. And uh, this one's just like, it doesn't make much sense to me. But I mean, if you have a better explanation than I do for that, feel free to tell me about it because I was just kind of puzzled by that. Some other things, like the girlfriend kept, um, she was a photographer and I really, like the way that they like kept showing us that she was a photographer, I really thought that her camera was going to come into play somehow, um, like a photo that she took or something, but it just never did. And I was like, you know, we see her camera at some point, but I'm just like, I really thought that she was gonna like take some sort of photographic evidence of something that happened. So that was like really, really weird to me. I was like, it's kind of like, what's that principle in like theater? Uh, whenever you like introduce a gun in the first act, it has to be used by the third act. What's this camera doing here even? Like, it just seemed like very out of place, but whatever, it was just always on her. Um, Bill Paxton played a bully and he was just hilarious. I loved him. He, um, you know, like I said, I wish that he was in it more, but um, his face, his, the faces he was making in this, he just looked like such a dick. So um, I really enjoyed that. And then the homophobic detective, I was just like, this guy, like, I, you just hate him. Um, there was some really unorthodox policing going on in this movie, I must say. He had it out for these dudes that he thought were gay, totally vilifying them, and um, it was it was weird. Something that you don't really see much. Like I can't, off the top of my head, I can't think of another like movie where there's a homophobe that's trying to accuse a gay person of murder. I don't know. I mean. I don't know, I'm just not thinking of anything off the top of my head, but 
yeah, that's just, it stuck out to me. And I don't know if you could see like really clearly her face, um, that's the aunt. She's like kind of got her nephew in a headlock, but look at her, like she is like, she cuts her hair um, at one point and just gets progressively and progressively weirder. Um, so <laughs> the evolution of her character and like kind of her spiral out of control is very entertaining. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot that I loved about it and a lot that made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think that you should give it a watch. Um, it's very unique and, um, you know, it's just got that, that feel from that time period that is just not going to be recreated today. So that was awesome. But let's check out, this has, um, a slip cover and, um, I think, yeah, I, I flipped around the artwork. So this is the reversible artwork. And if you look, this is, um, it has like a red background. I believe the previous Blu-ray had a blue background. So whenever you open it, there is the disc and you can see the reversible artwork is, um, just the cover of the slipcase. So, um, yeah, interesting red background. I thought it was kind of cool. Um, this art's kind of weird. It made me like, what's going on there? Special features. We have 2017 2K scan from the original camera negative, um, which the picture looked really, really good. I was very impressed by that actually. Um, you know, a lot of times it looks like they just upscaled a tape, but this is actually like pretty clear quality. Um, and then the actual special features, we have audio commentary by producer writer Stephen Brimer and co-writer Alan J. Gluckman, moderated by Nathaniel Thompson. And then we have an additional audio commentary with Jimmy McNichol, who was our star. And there's also open camera interviews with stars Jimmy McNichol and Susan Tyrell, which was really good. And then um, actor Stephen Easton, makeup artist uh, Alan A. Alpone, and producer Stephen Brimer. And then theatrical trailer. This is a 96 minute presentation, which it felt like longer to me. I'm not sure why. I think maybe there was just so many parts where I was uncomfortable. But, um, and then, uh, there's no subtitles or anything on this. So that's kind of like a bummer because a lot of times I want to like, um, you know how it's like mixed, a lot of movies are like mixed weird where the, um, like music or sound effects or, or screaming or whatever will be like so much of a higher volume than the dialogue and you want to hear what's actually being said. So I wasn't able to like read subtitles. So there's that. Um, but that is pretty much it. Um. And I know that a lot of people have seen this, um, so let me know if you have and what you think of it. But um, if you haven't, if you're p planning on picking this up, I know that um, it was kind of hard to get before this release. So um, this came out in early August, and um, prior to this coming out, it was like, it was, I believe it was out of print, so it was kind of um, pricey. So definitely worth finally checking out if you haven't. And that is my review. Big thanks to Code Red again for sending this to me for review. Very much appreciated. And I appreciate you watching this video. So uh, if you have some thoughts on it or on this movie, give me, uh, give me a comment and we'll have some dialogue ourselves. And uh, yeah, I will be back next week with another review. You can check out my Instagram in the link below to see. Maybe I will give some heads up on what that is. Pretty active on there. So if you want to I guess, see what I'm doing. There you go. But thanks again for checking this out and I will see you next time.